What is up, everybody? We are back. Ohio State football with Scarlet and great Johnny Bullet right here. We're about to bring in my fearless co-host in just a moment. And we are going to talk about the huge week one matchup. Ohio State versus Notre Dame battle the Midwest. Big boy football week one. What a treat for football fans. Even if you're not a Buckeye fan or an Irish fan, you got to admit this is a sweet week one matchup. I'm super excited for it. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, just because Ohio State is maybe a little bit overmatching uh, Notre Dame on paper, because of where this falls on the schedule, week one is this a tougher game than people think. Could the Irish pull off the upset? How likely is that? We're going to talk a little bit about this. All right. I'm going to ba- uh, bring in my co-host in just a second. Real quick, little participation from you, the audience. All we ask, comment one to ten. How much of a threat you think, or a challenge you think, the Irish pose to the Buckeyes in game one? One to ten. One, you're going to blow them out. Uh, Six or seven, you'd have like the Minnesota game last year. Seven, probably, where they struggle through two and a half quarters and pull away. Ten, it's a tight game or they win. Nine, you know, we got any upsets in there? Let us know what you think. One, two, ten. All right, let's not delay any longer. I got to bring in who you all are here for and who I'm here to see. It's fun recording with you always, Mr. Florida. Corey, we have last, a big... no, the last part I agree with. What, that that it's fun? Yeah. That's like the only thing you agree with? Very basically, yeah. He, it, that's odd that you find it fun and everything I say is disagreeable, but you find it fun. That's actually pretty pretty uh, you know, resilient of you. I will give you that. You are a resilient man. Uh, Corey, We got a big game week one. I got to say, it's kind of a treat. Last year, we opened with Minnesota. My special friend and listener, uh, Brock, treated me. And Corey had an invite too, but he had a super bad situation to deal with. But treated us. So I'll say he treated us because it was an open door uh, to a suite. And, And then Minnesota game. What a fantastic experience. I'm all about having listeners on here who end up being ballers and want to want to shower us with gifts. That was pretty awesome. Anyways, the suite was awesome. The game was pretty good because Minnesota with Ibrahim was a pretty decent team. It's a pretty, not great, but a ranked type of team. And then you go to Oregon week two, and I was like, guys, I don't want to see a Rutgers game ever again. I don't want Arkansas State. I don't want Akron. I don't want any of that ever again. I like these games. I like to have a little skin in it, something on the line. I get tired of playing the six years old at the YMCA. Yes, I'll lower the rim and dunk on them, but after four games of 10 nothing, I, you know, sometimes I want to step up a little bit and get a rush. And Corey, week one, out of conference, Notre Dame, uh, regionally kind of, I don't want to call them a rival, but a, a, a regional, I don't know, uh, a good team. It maybe been a little bit of bickering and recruiting lately. So, you build some animosity there. This is a heck of a matchup, man. I I, I think a lot of people view this as, uh, well, Ohio State's playing a good – they kind of look at it like Alabama, Texas, or like mm-hmm. when Alabama would schedule USC back when USC was actually decent. USC's a good team on paper. Bama's ball intents of purpose going to control the game. I think that's the way a lot of people are looking at this, and I'm maybe Lee or so in a little bit. Not so fast, my friend. What say you? Um, what, you know, two months ago, I was saying 42, 17 Ohio state. Um, I mean, I, I don't, again, I, I don't know that Marcus Freeman's not going to be a great coach. I'm not, I just know, there's no word on that. You know, you don't have any proof of that. People were talking about why him being a deep. Why wouldn't he be a great coach? Shut up. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. Um, he could be a great coach. He could be up uh, being the best Notre Dame coach ever. And there's a couple. What, what do you gonna... mean by that? What do you mean by that? Oh my gosh. Anyway. Uh, he could be great. He could be. Yeah, he, he could be great. He could be Lou Holtz. He could be Newt Rockney. He could be, uh, Aaron Parsegian Parse- Parse- or however you say his name. He, he could be one of those guys, but the problem is he's not proven. I don't, I don't know what to expect with him, but people were talking about him. Like he's this defensive guru. And I'm like, He's a good defensive coach. I'm not taking anything away from him. But Cincinnati didn't miss a beat without him. And then he kept Notre Dame's defense about the same as it was the year before. And I'm like, that's not a huge accomplishment to me. Not to say he's not good. It's just 
is he otherworldly? Not really yet. I haven't seen anything that suggests that. Was he going to be a head coach eventually? Of course he was. And they probably pulled the trigger on it faster than they wanted to because Brian Kelly kind of forced their hand with that. Yeah. Um, but that being said, you're going to get to see, like, Ryan Day, this is his fourth season as a head coach. He's his fifth camp. He should have. He's at home. He should have every advantage in the world, you know, preparing for this game versus Marcus Freeman. You would think with the experience that Ryan Day has. Um, I got to give that to Ohio State. I think that's where I, we should come out and be a little bit more of, a, of an efficient uh, football machine first week. We should be. I'm not saying it's what's going to happen. But Notre Dame's talented. They're a big boy program. They're not They're not a, a pushover. I do think we end up looking like we run away with this game, like a 17-point win. But I definitely think for the first two and a half quarters, it's going to be like, geez, this is a dog fight. And Notre Dame's got a good defensive line, you know, and and our offensive line is just, that's what that's the matchup that concerns me the most. It, it, our our offensive line is still kind of figuring it out versus a really good defensive line. So, exactly, I agree. Freeman will be aggressive, and he should be. I I would actually be more upset at Freeman if he wasn't throwing haymakers at us. You know, it's like come on, you know, bring the mm-hmm. bring the heat. But. I definitely think this is what a Ryan Day classic where we start out on offense. We're like, we're like, what's going on with the offense? We can't really move the ball. And then he starts figuring out. The he figures way. out what they're seeing. Exactly. He sees it. He is so good, man. You just reminded me that he is so good at seeing what the defense is doing. If he Reactive. hasn't already came out and sh- got your number already, he will by the end yeah. of the game. And it is, the way he dices up a second, second, secondary, the pa- the route patterns he calls, yep, based off of what the secondary does, is the second half of the Minnesota game. People I think what was open. such a t- stupid. I think open. what was such a treat to watch that game, Corey from the suite was not the was not being around a bunch of rich people. It was not the endless food coming behind me, which was nice. It was not the air conditioning again, which was nice. It was, I got to see from my perch the whole secondary every play. It was like a chess master, dude. What was it? CJ completed eight passes the whole second half or Six something? Eight passes the second half, I think. Like and, three and Corey, the I could game. call who was going to be open well before they the ball got. Like, that's how beautiful it was. That's a weird sidebar to get off of, but Ryan Day's a genius, and it needs to be talked about more. Anyways, so, Corey, you are back to saying, hey, this is what I think, Corey, in week one and how much of a challenge they will be. Please comment if you have it. Week one, you don't have things all figured out. Week one is, I always call this the great equalizer. And you know when playoff time comes or ranking time comes and people start arguing about what teams did against, mm-hmm. they do neutral sites or home and homes out of conference. Well, they didn't, they barely beat so-and-so. And I'm like, man, I, 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 give, it, I give teams a pass in week one. You're not the same. Last case in point, last year, Clemson versus Georgia. The game was decided by a pick six. Nobody can move the freaking ball. I mean, you you know you have to be better in a pick six than George, than Clemson to win the title. You have to be. Especially Georgia last year's went Clemson on, team. Yeah. Georgia went on to smooth out the wrinkles, right? They got much better. Um, Ohio State didn't. but <laughs> uh, <laughs> But you see what I'm saying? Teams change week to week, and that's why I tweeted a couple weeks ago. Got or last week got fairly decent response. I am prepared for the fact that this is a national championship contending team. Ohio State has freakish team, freakish roster. I am also contending that that week one's a great equalizer. Yes, Notre Dame's not as good, but it's week one. You're not crisp yet. It's like playing in grass slows everybody down and it gets them really close to this or playing in sand, you know what I mean? Or bad weather. It closes the talent gap a little bit. So um, that is why I'm a little bit cautious, just like what happened. You you see it in week one all the time. I don't, if this is week six, 42, 17 is not a bad call by you. If, if, if we see game we shows out better than we think they do. I mean, yeah. Who knows? Yeah. But um, this is one, the core is, Look, history doesn't mean anything when it comes to each individual game. I get it. There's no curses. There's no ghosts. But this is worth noting. One, people act like you come to the shoe at night and it's like some, first of all, it's so expensive. 
you're only you, you're not getting the rowdiest people. I mean, it's not a dead atmosphere by any means, but it's not the it's not Death Valley, it's not Texas A and M. Ever living? Yeah, it's not a whiteout. And Ohio State tra- traditionally just doesn't punish teams at home. Penn State last year was a nice environment. Penn State had no problem with it. They gave it was a nine point game or something stupid. Um, Corey, we have not won a home site, home and home, since Miami uh, was terrible in what 2010. Since we kind of yeah. broke them, you look at Oklahoma at home. Smoked them on the road. Actually played better than we were in that 2016 game because we just yeah. kept jumping, catching a jump, bunch of jump balls. Uh, that team wasn't that great. Lost to 2017. I get it. Our team. All all these times you're going to say, well, the Ohio State team actually wasn't that great that this year. That year that they lost, they're going to be actually great this year. But hold on. You look at 2000, uh, you know, you look at 17, you go back and you see Oklahoma game. Oklahoma was actually a really nice team, their playoff team, but still got smoke. Baker Mayfield, what a freakishly great season. Uh, so they're beat up there. Last year against Oregon, run the same play every time, lose at home. That was not a terrific, that was not a tough atmosphere for Oregon. It just wasn't. Um, mm-hmm. It was a noon game, too. It was stupid. But I give you 2014, Corey. Bob you lose to. Un- you lose the on-rate Virginia Tech, then you go and win the Natty. Like, we, week one, <laughs> week one is just different. You know, what What the kids say, it just hits different. Yeah. It, and it, I it say, looks- can you, and I say, can you spell that young man? And they say, bruh. But anyways, Corey, week one hits different. Yeah, I, I can't explain. Uh, Virginia Tech had a little bit of explanation to it. They, yeah, the Bear defense obviously threw him for a loop, and you had JT Barrett, a redshirt freshman, to start in a second game. And, and you don't have con- – but the week one, that you don't have contingencies. That might have even been week two. It was, you don't it, have was week, con- it was week two, but uh, week one was Navy. I mean, that yeah. was that was a goofy game to have to plan for, you know. Uh-huh. Um, so, I mean, but you look at like – I mean, I think that happened to Ohio State with the Troy Smith era where we lost to Texas at home, but we beat Texas the next year on the road, so – yeah, when James Laurinaitis balled out, yeah. Exactly. So it, it's a little interesting. To listen to USC, another one, we we actually got well, crushed both on the road. Of them. Yeah, yeah we, we got crushed on the road and we lost at home barely. I was um, in boot camp for the first one, the, yeah. the crushing you one. Didn't, you didn't miss much. Um, yeah, it was kind of like an extra blow. Like, hey, how did that Ohio State game go? 28-3. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> More push-ups. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Insult to injury. I don't want to be a fan anymore. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that makes me feel a little bit, Corey, that you can dissect each individual game and say, yeah, it doesn't affect this one. But, you know, we're not superstitious, I mean, the, the, the but we are a little there. stitious. And we yeah, are a little exactly. stitious. No, I mean, it's it's something to look at. I mean, it, it, but again, I look at the situation. There's no reason Ohio State shouldn't win. If they lose this, it's a choke job. It really is. It's it, Marcus it, it, Freeman. It's, and it speaks to the failure in camp preparation. Yeah, so it, Alabama it is, comes back week one. Everything I said about week one, take it to Tuscaloosa, throw it out the window because yeah. it those guys come out week one like they freaking battle tested. I don't know if he puts them through camps in the months it's illegal it's like to he's, or he's what. Like, he's like getting local NFL teams to come in and play them during camp. It's like ridiculous. It, it's like my high school basketball team. We used to when competition wasn't allowed. The boosters would pay our kids gas money to drive to other schools to go to their open gyms. <laughs> it's just like we they stay sharp all year. But anyway, he's, he's like Saban's like quietly getting the Saints in there to play Alabama during camp. I mean, this is yeah, they're always in peak form. But yeah, if they if Ohio State doesn't do well this year, I think in, in game one, I think it would be fair to say, hey, do you have a systematic bad approach in camp? If they, if I would not expect Urban to lose this game, um, I know we lost to Virginia Tech and all that, and Urban had lost three out of the last four at that point. But then we go on to win a natty, and obviously, th- if we lose this game, it doesn't dis- derail everything we want to do because you still got the rest of the season to play catch up. But again, it's a game you should win. Mm-hmm. I mean, Freeman being a rookie head coach, uh, rookie staff. You know, they they I, they got a redshirt sophomore quarterback, I think, starting Beckner, who's like, you know, decent talent, but he's not a whole not a heck yeah. of a lot of experience there. 
you got the number one quarterback in the country essentially starting for you. Uh, you got weapons everywhere. You have the excitement of a new defense with Jim Knowles. Mm-hmm. You you need you need to make a statement this game in my opinion. I'm yeah, not saying, look, look, don't get me wrong. If they win by a touchdown, it's a win's a win. Take it. It's week one. But they it would be behoove Ohio State to come out and win this one well and look good mm-hmm. doing it because then you're like okay we're off we're off and running. This team yeah. is, is a beast to deal with. A, a lot, you know, and I could even expect Virginia Tech 2015, like tied her down at half and then just smoke them in the second half. That's what I'm thinking talent, it's going to happen. I think it's going to be like, Your talent takes over, and then you go, whoa. Because by the end down of that 20 to 17, what's going on? You know? Yeah, and then by the end of that Virginia Tech 2015 game, I went, whoa, this team is nasty. This is a really good team. And then Ed um, Warner happened. And then yeah, Ed yeah, happened. And, <laughs> yeah, but jet, anyways. Jet, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they had a little bit of somebody else calling plays. I heard in that Virginia Tech game. Um, mm-hmm. That's a different story for a different day. But uh, yeah, if they lose this one, Corey, I would say like you have systemic or systematic issues with camp preparation because you guys, under two different head coaches, have really struggled in week one. And again, like we said before, we know there can be struggles because week one, Freeman's, Freeman's playing with house a, money. Freeman is playing he, with house money. He's a defensive guy, and he knows we got a new O line. 15 he's points say, spread. He's not expected show, to win. I'm not letting you run the ball on me. I'm loading the box. Show me you can pass and beat me when you don't have much time. And this is what, and you know CJ's unreal with his arm, and you know he uh, has great weapons. But we also know, real quick, there's that little thing in him that, like, I don't know that he's just an absolute warrior. If he gets sacked three times in the first quarter, I don't know if the game goes on really well. I don't know if he's Joe Burrow, you know. And I think a lot of people, do. they expect second half Rose Bowl CJ to just step right in, play at that unreal level all season. And I, I almost wonder, Corey, is that a little bit unfair to say? It, it's almost like with Trevor Lawrence. They expected that 2018 National Championship performance all day, every day. And it's just like, guys, if, if football was that, if anyone could do that, then... It, football be easy like if you could What's sustain the point that? of playing the games if he's going to be great every single game so yeah i is it a little unfair to expect him to come out and be of end of season form right yeah, away i i think so i think it's gonna i mean this is this is defense by the way this defense in my opinion is going to be better than what utah's defense was at the end of last year because utah was starting running backs at defensive that's back. true that's this, a good point that's a good point I mean, this in notre dame's defense is not terrible They're, i mean utah's defense is very good but they weren't healthy so yeah, I don't I, think they recruit the level Notre Dame does. No, they don't. They don't. But again, and Freeman's. We'll see what. I mean, we'll see what happens. It's 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 like I can't know what to expect with Notre Dame with Marcus Freeman at the helm for a full camp. He only had a month or two to coach him for the bowl game, and but this is he's got the whole year in full camp to do it. So let's see if he how good he is at prepping for Ohio State, and maybe he preps him perfectly. But Ohio State's just that good. I mean, we'll see what happens. Uh huh. All right, guys, we're gonna get out of your hair. I think Corey offered a really good insight to kind of put this in perspective. I do think um, maybe you'll come on board and say, hey, th- th- this game's not just going to be a w- – we have more five stars. We're running you off the field type of game. Score prediction, guys, drop them down in the comments. What do you think? I would love to review this and see if uh, if anybody actually nails it this far out. That would be awesome. So appreciate you guys. Remember, can't say this enough. If you don't take anything away from this video, take this away. There's no such thing as boneless wings. Goodbye. God bless.